So I thought I'd have fun with this uh, delay line that I took out of a, an old analog oscilloscope. We'll talk about delay lines and why uh, analog oscilloscopes needed them and why digital oscilloscopes do not need them. Uh, but it's just a coil of wire and uh, this one's a bit special. Um, it, look, it looks kind of fun. And uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll make some measurements on it and, uh, and go for there. So let's just kind of take a quick look at it. So it's about, um, uh, it's about 80 millimeters in diameter and about 60 millimeters high. So if we just do a quick calculation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's eight turns. And I imagine maybe there's a one foot as it goes around, it's one foot. So let's say that we have uh, eight turns of one foot each, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven of those. So seven times eight um, feet, okay? So just very, very crude, just kind of a back of the envelope. 7.8 feet and uh, light travels about 11.8 uh, nanoseconds per per uh, foot, just say, say it's a foot per nanosecond. So we should have about 56 nanoseconds of cable, right? Just, just ballpark, it's obviously not that, but it's just ballpark. All right, so um, what we're gonna do is we're going to inject a signal into this end of the cable, and we are gonna measure the output on that end of the cable, all right? So we have, uh, the signal coming in here, and I have a oscilloscope probe on that so we can watch the, watch the signal go in. And then the output is going to go to those connectors there and go into a 50 ohm load. So the output is going to be terminated with 50 ohms going right, in, in, right into the oscilloscope, okay? All right, so this is what we're going to end up with. We have uh, two traces. We have the input trace, which is yellow and we have the output trace, which is blue, okay? And we have square wave coming in, and they, they, they lie right on top of one another. So let's zoom in. Okay, this is a one kilohertz signal, I think. We're just interested in the edge though. As we get zoom in closer and closer and closer, we can see that there's a delay between the input and the output. And, uh, so this is 50 nanoseconds per division. And if I put the marker there and the marker there, it's 50, it's over 50. Uh, 50, this would be 60. Oops, I hate my touch, I should turn off the touch screen on this thing. Uh, would be about 58 nanoseconds, but we can get we can get fancy here with this scope. We can say add. We can do uh, other, we can do delay from one to two and two is going to be channel four. So we're gonna measure the delay between the channel one and channel four and we can why did it not turn on? <laughs> what did I do wrong? Let's turn the indicator on. Go back to measure. We can do add. Add this and this. Oh, I needed to click on it. There we go. And we can measure. Look at that. Oh my goodness. 50 foot. Oh man, it's bouncing around. Let's take a single shot here. Uh, 54.75 nanoseconds. Hey, that's a pretty good guess, huh? <laughs> I did good. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's run it, but we're going to add some averaging so we make a better, better measurement. I think I have averaging on already, but we will acquire. Yeah, we have averages set to four. So let's, oops, let's set them to 128 and watch this thing settle down. Oh, there we go. 56.000 nanoseconds. I swear, I swear that, that that quick calculation I did was just by dumb luck, absolute dumb luck, but we're getting 50, 50, uh, let's see here. Oh, I, I can go faster here, get a little bit better, and I can turn on my 
measurement. I can't, yeah, there's our, uh, there's where it's measuring. It's going to measure between here and here. And it's measuring 54.4. 54.4. Somewhere around in there. Anyway, yeah, it's a delay line. It delays, okay? And it, it delays because the speed of electricity is not infinite. And there's a length of wire. So let's talk about this for a second then. All right. Let's say you have some signal and you're viewing that on your oscilloscope, okay? Your cathode ray, cathode ray oscilloscope. Well, this signal also goes into a trigger circuit, okay? And the trigger circuit sees the edge, right? It sees this edge and it says, uh, we're going to start the sweep of the oscilloscope and the oscilloscope will start to go and um, the trace needs to be synchronized in order to see it, okay? But if, if there's a delay between turning on the oscilloscope sweep and this and the trigger the the step may be gone before your oscilloscope sweeps and so you need to have the trigger happen before the event and in the old tectronics oscilloscopes it took about 60 nanoseconds between the trigger event and the oscilloscope being able to see it and so they needed about a 60 nanosecond uh, uh, a length of of delay line in order in their scopes in order for you to, in order for you to see it right and then uh, some of the scopes got good where they had longer delay lines and you could see things before the trigger so you could sort of see backwards in time and of course those digital oscilloscopes just digitize everything you get to pick where you see it and it, they're just trivial these days but back in the old days you really had to worry about this how long does it take your trigger circuit to actually see it and then how long does it take you to command the oscilloscope, oscilloscope sweep to line up in the right spot and there was this delay that they needed to account for and that's why all of the old uh, analog oscilloscopes that had any any good speed to them. If you have a very, very slow oscilloscope, then it didn't matter. But if you had a fast oscilloscope and you wanted to actually see events, you know, maybe you only had a couple hundred nanoseconds across the uh, across the tube, you needed to make sure that your your edge was centered in there and you may have been way off to one side if you didn't ha take, take into account this delay of the triggering. Um, so that's why they're in there. Um, you won't see them anymore. And uh, you will only see them if you take apart <laughs> if you take apart uh, oscilloscopes. This is a really nice one. Uh, usually they're not this nice. Uh, I've, I've seen quite a few of them. Sometimes they're kind of around the outside of the case, so they're really long. This one's like really compact, which is nice. Uh, this one seems to be pretty fancy also. Since you have to send the signal through this cable, you don't want to uh, perturbate it. You don't, you don't want to mess it up. So this cable is actually uh, two wires uh, with a shield with a shield okay so it has a uh, it has two wires so you can send a differential pair through this thing so th I'm sure that's what they did they probably sent a plus and minus signal uh, through this thing so it came out undistorted on on the other end and then the shield is just grounded to keep out any noise from from the uh, high voltage sweep of the oscilloscope and stuff needed to make sure you didn't corrupt your data um, but that's how this thing is made. There's actually two, two wires in here. And we, what we were looking at here on the oscilloscope was I was injecting into just one, one of those wires. Uh, I wasn't going through the second wire.